Good morning, and welcome to Trail Grazers, where we focus on good food for the trail. If we could ever get out on the trail. And so once again, we were thwarted this week by more stucco work, and also the monsoon season that we are in has dumped loads of rain up where we want to go, and it's way too muddy. So today we're going to do something different. Um, I am working on a um, nutrient-dense meal book, and for part of that, the other day, I made a, let's see, what was it? Zucchini Italian soup. It was so good. Oh my gosh. Jim and I both had seconds, and I never have seconds. And um, so I raised the question, I wonder if we could freeze dry this. And then Jim said, well, I wonder if it would turn out if we did freeze dry it, which got us to talking about a lot of our freeze dried foods. We have had our freeze dryer for just over two years about two and a half years. And admittedly, at first, I was so excited to have it that I was just doing everything indiscriminately. And uh, then when we started doing videos on, on freeze drying, I did not always test the food. I was so pleased at how it tasted dry and just assumed that it would rehydrate just fine. And, and um, we had one of our subscribers over on Rose Red mention something about, could you just rehydrate the food and let us know how it has turned out? And even though we have done that intermittently, we're going to start doing it regularly because that is an important part of the whole process. But we went out to our freeze-dried foods and picked out a bunch of things that we're not sure that we ever tested to see if they are really going to work. Now, one thing that we have tested on camera is both eggs. I love, we love the way eggs do freeze-dried. And um, we can do six dozen eggs at a time in our freeze dryer, probably more, but we're a little cautious about it. And then we crush them. And because they are not like cooked, these are like dehydrated raw eggs. We can scramble them, we can put them in all kinds of baked goods, and they worked fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And so we have done a whole lot of these, and I'm not going to show these today. Not too long ago, we did another video for this channel on new ways of doing eggs where we did scrambled eggs and freeze-dried them. And in that video, we did rehydrate them and gave them highest possible marks. And so even though we've done a lot of eggs, we're going to eliminate these from today's work. Then we got a whole bunch of avocados. And um, so we freeze-dried slices, and I made guacamole, and we freeze-dried guacamole. And I did this about two years ago. These are under a year. And um, the, these we got in February, these lemons. So we are going to do these. On this row, I have some meats, carnitas, sirloin gravy, cooked hamburger and onions. And this was Jim's... Um, one of the first ones that he was the primary star in uh, doing this on our griddle outside. Some ham chunks, this is stew, and this is rotisserie chicken. On the back row, we have some beans that I'll talk about in a few minutes. We have some sliced potatoes, and we have some really old broccoli and uh, cauliflower. This one isn't even dated. And I do remember that this one was one that I was so excited to do, so I know that this one is probably about two and a half years old. The way that we are going to do this is I'm going to clear a lot of the things away so that we can simplify things, and we will just do a few jars at a time. And um, I have my data book here all set up. I have all of our foods listed right here. And then in this little chart, it's 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I want to get an idea of how long it takes to have these things rehydrated. So we will be back when I get everything organized. Okay, so here we go. We're set up and I have about roughly a fourth of a cup of product in each of the bowls. And I put the lids back on so I can keep them straight. Some of these are going to be rehydrated while some will be reconstituted. The reconstituted ones include the stew and 
the sirloin gravy. And with these two, the amount of water matters because we don't want them to get too runny. Now, a lot of people, and I've explained this in other videos before, go to a lot of trouble to weigh things before and after. I used to do that, uh, weigh them before and after processing so they knew would know exactly how much water. Well, it didn't always work out scientifically the way that it logically appears that it should have. And so I have just learned with two and a half years experience that my best guess is as good as doing all of that extra work, but everybody needs to do it their own way. So some of these, it doesn't matter how much water we put in, they will only take in as much as they will, and then they're done. With others, we have to um, measure the water to be sure we don't get it too runny. So here we go with rotisserie chicken. This is just rehydrating. So I can just put a bunch of water in. With the stew, I'm going to start, this is hot water. It's not boiling, but it's very hot. I'm just going to start with what I think is a good amount. With the ham, the ham is just rehydrating, so the amount of water doesn't matter. With the hamburger and onions, same thing. It's just rehydrating. But with the sirloin gravy, this, if I remember right, has mushrooms in it. It also has chunks of sirloin in it. And so I want to be careful about how much I'm going to be putting in there. So I'm just starting with a little bit. And the carnitas are just rehydrating. Now I'm going to go ahead and start my stopwatch. And then we'll be testing as we go. And this is rough. This is, I'm not in a scientific lab. Our lives don't depend on any of this. So I'm just going to, this is just kind of ballpark on the timing. Oh, this is chicken. This is rotisserie chicken. Done. Four minutes. So with the stew, oh my gosh, it really smells good. Let's see if the meat is done. My gosh. Is that meat really done? Sounds kind of crunchy. It is still crunchy. We'll give that another minute. With the ham. Ham appears to be done all the way through. And it has pinked up a little bit too. That wasn't four minutes, that was 40 seconds on the chicken. This is now two minutes on the ham, it's really good. The hamburger, clean fork. This I would just strain if it's done. completely done. And there we have hamburger and it is done and it was done in two and a half minutes. And the sirloin gravy, rinse my spoon. It is a little bit runny. So if I were going to, if I were actually rehydrating this to use with my family, I would add just a little bit more. But that meat is not done. It's still very hard. So we're gonna let that sit. And then with the carnitas,
carnitas are done. Now, how much time do you have on that? Oh, three minutes. Everything so far is in the five minute column, but written in minutes. Okay, so this is just fantastic. With the carnitas, I think I would um, try to reconstitute them. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, I pressure canned some of the carnitas broth. That's what I would rehydrate with, and I would be more careful. And in fact, I would reconstitute getting just the right amount of um, that broth in there to, to reconstitute instead of draining off because it does taste a little washed out when I did it the way that I did it. All right, give me another couple of minutes. I'm going to um, clear the deck of everything that we have completed, and then we'll come back with what is remaining. Well, our stew, which is right here, took a total of seven minutes. And otherwise, it is just fine. The veggies are done. The stew is done. It's not quite as smooth as it is when you first make it, but heck, when we're camping, who cares about that? So this is just fine. So that was seven minutes, and I've put those jars away. However, our sirloin gravy is a stinker. The meat is not softening at all. I might have to um, even put this in a saucepan to warm it if, um, if I'm gonna be successful. I'm not happy with that at all. I like freeze-dried foods to reconstitute or to rehydrate fairly quickly, um, but if we can still make use of it by warming it in the pan, that would be good too. And I may try that off camera and come back with a little report later. Um, so here we are, I've got, um, what I thought was broccoli and cauliflower, but when I opened up the jar to pour these in, I found some interesting things. I think it is also yellow squash and carrots. Can you believe that carrot? That is a carrot and it is white. All of them are as white as can be. All of my freeze-dried carrots, not just the ones in this jar, are turning white. And I no longer use baby carrots. Um, I don't like how they are processed. And so I'm getting the long carrots. I'm even growing some of my own. They all turn white. The orange color is gone. It fades. The taste is still there, but let's see what these do when we add hot water. So we're going to start down here. Again, we have this one that needs to be reconstituted. This is guacamole. Everything else can be just rehydrated. So with lemons, a friend gave us a big box of lemons from her tree and uh, she has property down in Arizona where they grow lemons, and uh, or maybe it was California. Ah, that's hot. And so we did a lot in February of this year, we did a lot of lemons, and I did lemon juice and lemon rounds like this. And I use lemons a lot as garnish, and so it would be just great not to have to go to the store and buy a fresh lemon if I can get fresh lemon juice and uh, those rounds for garnish. So we'll see about that. Now, with the guacamole, I know that this works. I have tried it lots of times. This is one that needs to be reconstituted, so I'm going to be careful about the amount of water. I'm going to let it soak up that water, and then we will see how it goes. So I haven't done the guacamole on camera yet, but I have done it here at home, and it has worked beautifully. Okay. These are some avocados. We got a big box of avocados and um, they can just rehydrate. I also use avocados for garnish and so it would be great if I could get that to work. These are fast beans. Now let me tell you what fast beans are. These beans have previously been completely cooked. I slow cook them on, on the stove. I don't pressure cook them or anything like that. And I then will either dehydrate them or freeze dry them so that and these are kidney beans so that they can reconstitute very fast to be used in recipes. These are so great to have on hand. And these of course are just regular potatoes that have been blanched. And 
here is the water for our vegetables to see if we can get any of their color back. Okay, I'm going to then set the timer again. So 26 minutes so far on this. So I'm going to stop and start again, reset and start again. So we'll see how these things do. So 27 minutes so far on the sirloin gravy. Plus however other long it's gonna take. All right, let's revisit from the beginning. The lemons are completely done. So that's 20 seconds. I don't know if I can get any juice from them. A little bit. A little bit it looks like. But these would look just fine as a garnish. Okay, that's good. The guacamole, not quite done, but coming along. The avocados, not done at all. The fast beans, completely done. Oh yeah. These are fast beans, honey. So there are the fast beans and they did just over a minute. Pretty good. And the potatoes. Some spots are done, some aren't quite done yet. We'll wait till they all get done. And our vegetables. Looks like it is yellow squash. It's done tough as nails. Yeah, it looks like you're really struggling. Just it's awful. Place. Cauliflower is completely soft all the way through. Nope. Oh, that was broccoli. This is cauliflower. Well, carrot is ringing wet. Very carroty taste. You can see no, no color on the inside. Carrots probably did best of all. This I am not going to save. It is not worth it. I don't know what in the world I would do with this if it's not going to rehydrate uh, and, and be soft and um, it's very stringy, so I don't know if it's because it is aged out or what, but this is no longer useful for us. Very tough, too. It's very tough, very tough. So that was, that's a fail. That is a big fail. Okay, so let's check our guacamole. Almost done. See how nicely that just turns right back into guacamole. A couple of more little spots that need to be done. And these avocados. Not quite done. Looks like you're gonna need some time. Yeah, they're gonna need some time. Potatoes are done. I can tell by the look, those were four minutes. Potatoes, four minutes. And this I'm not even gonna record because I'm not gonna use it. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do now, while we give these other th couple things more time, is I'm going to put a little uh, pot on the stove and see if I can warm up this sirloin gravy and get it to reconstitute. So we'll be back in just a few.
All right, let's wrap this up. First of all, I put the beef stew, no, the uh, sirloin gravy on the stove and just boiled it for two minutes and the meat is now soft. However, it's not tender. But I don't think that is the fault of the rehydration. I think what that, of the reconstitution, I think the meat was tough to begin with. And so next time I do this recipe, I will be using ground sirloin instead of the chunks of sirloin, and I think it will be delicious. The gravy itself has a wonderful flavor, just absolutely wonderful, and it reconstituted, mm, it is so good. It reconstituted very, very smoothly. So this is a keeper with the understanding that doing it again, I will not use regular sirloin, I'll use ground sirloin. Um, one of the things as we were doing the taste testing afterward, Jim and I both commented on how wonderful the hamburger turned out. It tasted just like it came right off the pan. So um, let's revisit the, let me rinse these. The avocados are a complete fail. They're rubbery, they're yucky, they taste bad, they don't rehydrate well at all. And I'm really disappointed because I did quite a few like this and I should have done a test run to test them first. What I learned from this experience is next time we have a windfall of avocados, I am most definitely going to turn all of it into guacamole. Look at this guacamole. It is perfect. It's wonderful. Bring on the corn chips. Tastes like the day I made it. I really like my guacamole. <laughs> oh, that's bad. I really do like my guacamole recipe, and this has turned out just perfect. So that's a keep. Now I want to show you. Some of you have seen me use this before. I'm re-vacuum sealing everything. And this little tool was sent to us by one of our viewers over on Rose Red. And it is just a portable battery operated vacuum sealer. And oh my gosh, it's fabulous. It is, it's up on our um, Amazon store, but it's on, I think it's on the um, Rose Red side and not the Trail Grazer side. But this just fits over. And it runs. You can kind of hear a sound differential. Um, it has a screw off piece that this piece will fit a regular mouth jar and this will fit the wide mouth jar. So I've already revacuumed everything else that we're not gonna be throwing away. And I'm sad to be throwing away food, but it's better that than storing it, taking up the space on our shelves and then counting on it and have it not deliver when uh, it really needs to deliver. Okay, so. That's all there is to it. So easy. I hope I have lots more guacamole out there. I don't really remember. But we will be dumping those avocados, sadly. Dumping the broccoli and cauliflower mix. And by the way, Jim and I remembered that that was a frozen mix of vegetables. If you have had better luck with cauliflower and broccoli, please put your note down in the comments so the rest of us can read what it is that you did and how you are using it. And if you have comments on any of these things, as well as uh, things that have not worked for you that you may have freeze dried or um, uh, dehydrated. So, we have a lot more foods out there that we have not yet tested on camera. So if this is useful to you and you would like for us to do a second verse of this using different foods, please let us know in the comments and we will put together another video in a little while when the roads are muddy up on the mountains and we can't get there. At least we can do some experimenting with the food to test it to be sure that when we take it on the trail, it works for us in the way that we hope it will. So thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate you. 
Please subscribe if you haven't and share our channel and the information with all of your friends who also may want to learn a little bit more about our travels and our use of foods on the trail, great food on the trail. So we will see you soon, hopefully out there on the trail.